Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's the start of the weekend here and I'm excited to do a bit of a newsy, chatty video for you today. And I thought today it would be fun to catch you up with some favourite things of mine that I'm looking forward to using throughout upcoming spring. A lot of people ask me questions about fashion and skincare and sort of other things that I'm enjoying besides books. So I thought I'd share a few of those things with you today. And then Mum and I are going to head to York today, which I'm very excited about, because we're seeing an exhibition about the Bloomsbury group at the York Art Gallery. I'm really looking forward to seeing this exhibition. It sounds fantastic and I want to do a bit of secondhand book shopping in York too. So I'll take you along for that and we're going also to an orchid flower festival at Burton Agnes Hall which you might remember from my snowdrop video. So we're heading there too and I'll take you along and then hopefully I'll be able to share some of the books that I bought in York with you as well as some other secondhand books I've been buying lately. So basically I'm just sharing a lot of hopefully good things in this video and having a bit of a catch up with you. So what sort of prompted me to do this as well was I got some really exciting post with a brand new handbag in it. If you've been following me for a while then you may remember that last year I was given this beautiful leather handbag by Teddy Blake which is a New York based company but all of their handbags are designed and made in Italy with real Italian le leather. I absolutely have loved using this bag over the past year, you've probably seen it pop up in my videos, so I was really thrilled when Teddy Blake got in touch with me again and offered to send me another handbag in exchange for a review on my YouTube channel. So let me show you the bag that I chose for spring. This was the Ava Croco bag in camel brown. And like I said, I really loved it, but I wanted a bit more of something in a spring palette um, to go ahead for the next few months. So I'll show you what I got. And it came in this ooh, amazing box, you can see. And then I've got the handbag inside here. So, in its own little bag, I'll just pop that down. And I went for the same style of handbag. So, look how adorable this is. Just make sure you can see that. This is the nude pink colour which I thought was just perfect for spring. I absolutely love it. And again, I've gone for the Ava handbag. I'll put all of the links, by the way, in the description box so you can check out all of the handbags, but you'll have gathered that the Ava style is my personal favorite. This is the nine inch one, so it's smaller. I wanted one a bit more compact this time. I love the 14 inch one for when I'm like really having to carry a lot of camera gear and all that kind of thing with me. But I wanted one a bit more dainty that I could see taking out, for instance, I'm taking my mum out for afternoon tea for Mother's Day and we've also booked Easter Sunday lunch out and I can just really see myself going out with this little handbag um, with a nice dress hopefully too so it's just a bit more dainty and I wanted a bit of a smaller size but I can still fit a lot in this bag too. So it's got the same lovely details, I love the sort of gold detailing of the metalwork there are lots of different handbag designs available on the Teddy Blake website. They say they really have a handbag design for every occasion, and that's really true. So they have a lot more evening style bags as well as everyday bags. I like the Ava bag a lot because I think it looks smart in the daytime, but I could also conceivably use this in the evening too. And what's great about it is you can just hold it like this, but it also comes with a strap, which 
I really like for the daytime as well because if I'm out and about with my camera, then I can just put the strap onto the bag and have it as a shoulder bag over my shoulder as well, which is really, really handy. I'll show you the inside as well. I'm always so impressed by the quality of Teddy Blake handbags. Like I said, it's real um, premium Italian leather that they use. They really try to go for a very luxury handbag feel and detailing just without the price tag. So I take out the tissue paper. I'm just so excited to get a new handbag for spring. I think it's lovely to start thinking about some spring fashion and this is really inspiring me and it's sort of inspired me to go to York because I don't know, I just felt like getting out and about <laughs> with my new handbag. So you can see in this one, there's a zip on the inside as well as a zipper compartment on the outside, which is great if you have a travel card, things like that, um, or if train tickets, things you will need to access quickly. But it's like a lovely sort of suede finish on the inside. And there's just such a great look to the bag. I like a bit of a classic look. I think this is very classic looking, but just really timeless as well. And I like the sort of croco finish on this. I think it just looks very elegant and stylish. And I think that they do such a great job at really creating very sort of luxurious handbags, but a, a very good price, especially considering the real quality of the leather. They're designed in Italy. So there's really a handbag for everyone, but I couldn't resist the Ava style again. That just that one just really seems to have my name on it. So I'm so thrilled. I'm going to take this out to York today and use it for the first time. So I'm really looking forward to that. I do have a little um, code for you as well that will get you an extra $30 off. The handbags on the Teddy Blake website are up to 60% off. So there are lots of really, really good bargains. And if you sign up to their newsletter, then new collections are released very frequently and new designs like every month. And there are lots of great deals as well. But my code is TBMiranda30. So do use that. I've put it in the description box as well with um, the links and everything for you too. If you are inspired, you want to check out the handbags, then do have a look um, down below because all the details are there. But yes, also if you want to get anything, then do use my code TBMiranda30. Anyway, I can't wait to go out with this <laughs> today and have a bit of an outing. But I wanted to share some other favorite things that um, I have bought myself lately and that I've been absolutely loving. One of them are these beautiful tulips you can see here. I mean, oh, these are just making me so happy every single day. I think that they're gorgeous. They're parrot tulips from Smith & Munson, which I've bought their tulips numbers of times before. And they grow their own tulips and they have a really beautiful selection. So I love to order from them because it's nice to support a family-based business as well. And they just do really lovely quality tulips. And these ones are just going to look better and better the more they come out. I love parrot tulips, but they also have like double tulips and other a bit more special varieties. So those are making me really happy at the moment. And then if you follow me on Instagram, you probably have also realized how much I love Emma Bridgewater. And I've been so impressed by her new spring china collection i think it's just gorgeous and there are some really wonderful things for spring coming out so my little mug here is one of the emma bridgewater pieces i love the hens and the little chickens i think that that's 
absolutely adorable. But there are a few other things that I wanted to show you from her new range that I especially love for spring and for Easter. So let me just get them. So Emma Bridgewater is a female British ceramics designer. I absolutely love her stuff, but I think lately she's just been getting better and better and better. And there are two real favourites of mine from her new collection. Well, actually three. <laughs> three real favourites of mine. So there's the Blue Tit and Blossom collection. This is the mug from it which I just find adorable and it makes me so excited for springtime when the blossom really comes out. I'm so thrilled with this. I love the mug. It's so sweet. I love blue tits. I see them outside all the time too in our cherry tree. So this just really makes me think of where I live as well. And I adore that. I showed you one of her Easter mugs already, but she's also done this Easter egg design which I think is just stunning as well. I can't wait to fill the, this bowl with little mini Easter eggs. I think it's going to look adorable. <laughs> so this I'm sort of setting aside for when Easter comes, but I'm really looking forward to pulling this out then too. And she's got this little hot crust bun plate with the same design. And I've got that too because it just screams Easter and hot cross buns and I can't wait to get that out as well. And then she's got this size of mug. So um, it's like the half size to this. I normally get the full size, but I adored this pattern which has primroses on it. We're starting to see the primroses coming out now and it only is available in the smaller size but I still couldn't resist it and I quite like this size if I have a hot chocolate or something like that so I absolutely love this mug. As always I'll link everything in the description box so you can check them out and then something else I wanted to share that I love to get from Emma Bridgewater and I think that these make wonderful gifts as well and that's her tins and she's got this gorgeous blossom pattern. I think the tins are really reasonable, they're about £10 and one of my favourite things to do for a gift or if you're looking for a low-key Mother's Day present, in the UK Mother's Day is at the end of March by the way, that's why I'm talking about it, it's much sooner than in the States or parts of Europe. Um, but if you're looking for a low-key Mother's Day gift or sort of part of a bigger gift, then I think it's so nice to do something like bake some brownies and put them in a tin like this um, or any homemade goodie. But I think it's just lovely to have something homemade and to give the tin and the homemade treats as a gift. And I love this Blossom tin by Emma Bridgewater. And then I also love this Blue Tit and daffodil um, tin. I think it's really gorgeous. So these are two of my favourite tins. And then I was talking about maybe baking something homemade and brownies are always my first choice to put in a tin like this. And I wanted to share this amazing recipe book with you. And that's the Brownie Diaries. This is such fun. When I first saw this on Instagram, I thought maybe it might be a bit gimmicky, but because I love brownies so much, I thought I'm going to order it anyway. And actually it's fabulous. The book is by Leia um, Hyslop, Hyslop. I'm not quite sure how you say her last name, but there are so many different recipes for brownies that sound so good. And they each one comes with a little sort of personal backstory from Leia, which I like. So there's things like, help I've got a hangover brownies, lonesome tonight brownies, which sound really good by the way, Oreos, peanut butter, um, and all the feels apparently go into these brownies, but I wouldn't mind being lonesome just to make these brownies, to be honest, they sound really good. Can I have brownies for breakfast brownies? brownies that's with Nutella, banana, and cereal crunch. Cheating on brownies with cookies brownies. I know someone who would love these brownies. <laughs> have to make them for them. Friday night brownies is like payday brownies. There's here comes summer brownies. Did I mention I can't eat gluten brownies? I mean, every kind of brownie or blondie recipe you could think of is pretty much in here. 
and they all sound amazing. So I was so glad that I got this and I think this would be a really nice gift to give someone, maybe again with the tin filled with one of the brownie recipes from here, that would be so nice. But anyway, um, uh, this has really made me very happy lately and I wanted to recommend it. Then people ask me about skincare a lot and I've discovered a new favourite that I really want to share with you because I'm using it all the time at the moment and I absolutely love it. So it is this brand called Walida and this product, it's amazing, it's called Skin Food and I get the quite a rich regular variety. There's also a variety that is Skin Food Light but I get the sort of original one and I put it on my face every morning. It makes your skin, I think, look very glowy under makeup, but it's a very rich moisturizer. I tend towards having drier skin and I find that this time of year when we're transitioning between winter into spring is really hard on my skin still have the heating on, going out walking in those cold March gales <laughs> and it is not great for my skin at all and this has been a real hero product for me. I've already gone through a whole tube of this, um, this is a new one that just came yesterday uh, because I just ran out and I love it and I also really love their body butter. It smells really good. Uh, I just, I love how this smells and it's so creamy and rich. It really melts on the skin. Again, I have quite dry skin, so I like something that gives a lot of moisture. If you have oilier skin, then you might not like this product. It might not be for you. But if you do have drier skin, I would really recommend um, this. I love it anyway. I also have the little body scrub in this make as well and I really like that. I can't remember um, if on my YouTube channel I've mentioned the other moisturiser I like a lot so I thought I'd just tell you about this too. I've been using this for ages, it's Lumen Nordic Hydra 24 hour moisturiser. I tend to put this one, at, this one on at night and I really like it, it's my favourite of the Lumen moisturisers that I've tried so far. I think all of these moisturisers have a great price tag on them, they're really reasonable and I think they are very high quality though, so I absolutely love these and highly recommend them. And then something else I wanted to share that I've been uh, really enjoying, well that I enjoyed, two things actually. One is a film called Flea that is Oscar nominated. It's an animated film and to be honest I don't normally tend to watch a lot of animated films but I thought this one worked so well in animated form. It's a sort of real life based um, documentary style film and it's all about what it really means to be forced to flee your home and to become a refugee and watching it especially in today's climate with what's happening in the world in Ukraine right now it made it even more poignant to watch this film and I so recommend it you can watch it through Curzon Home Cinema and it's also still, I think, showing in Curzon Cinemas too. So I really recommend um, checking that out. I'll put a link to it in the description box. My mum and I watched it last week and we were really blown away by it, by it. I thought it was amazing. So that's just something I've really loved lately too. And then also talking about the Ukraine crisis, one thing that I did last week, um, that helped me feel like I was sort of doing something and I was really grateful to Tracy Anderson who is a fitness instructor whose uh, exercise classes I do but she provided a sort of virtual um, workout session um, that she took herself and you can still stream it so you can buy this class and through buying it you 
donate essentially to a charity um, set up to help the innocent victims of the UK of the Ukraine war and all of the proceeds go to this charity. The class is available to stream until the 18th of March. So if you want to, and you can donate as much as you want. So if you want to donate in that way and just feel like you're also kind of moving together with a lot of other women who are donating and, you know, just feeling kind of a part of that connection then I really recommend having a look at that too. Um, I will warn you, it is a fairly advanced level class, so you might want to just take it easy, or you might want to just watch it rather than do everything, or like just do the arms, or, you know, um, Tracy Anderson has a method that it can be a bit hard to just throw yourself in at the deep end. I've been doing her workouts for years, but they're very dance-based and Pilates-based, but, they're also style all her own. So um, it would also though be a good way of checking out her exercise method and seeing if you like it. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I've been doing it for a very long time, but I just thought it was also a nice way to be able to donate as well. Um, but who I would also really recommend following and who has a lot of information about how you can help right now um, is Olya Hercules, who is a U Ukrainian cook who is now based in the UK. I have all three of her cookbooks, I think, and they're brilliant. Um, but her Instagram is so worth following right now because she is sharing so much information and so many ways that you can help and be proactive. So I would also, well, I just really wanted to share her at the moment as also someone who's just very inspiring too. And um, she has so much to offer generally, but she's also an incredible person to be following at the moment. But anyway, it was nice to have a bit of a chat with you and to be able to share a few things besides books that I'm really enjoying at the moment. So I hope you enjoy these recommendations too. And yeah, don't forget to check out the link for the bag. I remember my discount code of TB Miranda. 30 for 30 dollars off but now let's head to york It was a beautifully sunny early spring day in York with blue skies and daffodils starting to bloom. After visiting the art gallery, I enjoyed having a stroll around the city and popping into my favourite secondhand bookshop, the Minstergate Bookshop. I'll share the books I got later in this video, so stay tuned for that. After lunch at the York Art Gallery, we headed to Bert and Agnes Hall to see their Orchid Festival. The opulent rooms of the Elizabethan stately home provided stunning backdrops to the colourful flowers. Years ago, I worked in a garden shop in London that specialised in orchids and I loved seeing so many different beautiful varieties on display here in Yorkshire. I think it's my favourite orchid festival that I've been to. Hi again everyone, so I hope you enjoyed those little snippets of film from my time in York and at the Orchid Festival. It was hard to film, unfortunately I couldn't film in the York Art Gallery at all, you were only allowed to take photos, 
but I absolutely loved the Bloomsbury exhibition. I've been to many exhibitions devoted to the Bloomsbury group, but I think that was the best one that I've seen. It was really wonderfully curated, absolutely fascinating. If you're interested in the Bloomsbury group, Virginia Woolf, Vanessa Bell, all of that sort of thing, then I so recommend going. It would be worth a day trip from London. It's showing, I think, until June, so you've got some time to see it. And I highly recommend it. I recommend it. It was the first time we've been back to a gallery since pre-Covid and it felt amazing to be back and seeing beautiful works of art again. But yes, I really, really enjoyed that exhibition. So I thought I'd show you what I bought in York and people always ask me where I get like cards and stationery from and I love art gallery shops and museum shops for cards and stationery. I always have a look in them and I always sort of come away with a stack of cards but they so often have the best selection and the York Art Gallery has some wonderful Bloomsbury related cards right now. So I picked up loads by Vanessa Bell. So I'll just show you really quickly the cards that I got. Sorry if they're a bit shiny because I've got the plastic wrapper on them, but they're just beautiful as you can see. This one was a real favorite of mine, the dining room window, Charleston. I hadn't seen that one before and I think it's gorgeous. Um, so, you know I like my floral cards, but Vanessa Bell is a favourite artist of mine anyway. So, these were all ones <laughs> by her, and I can't wait to send them to friends and use them in photos. So I was really thrilled to pick up such a lovely stack of them. But yeah, that's one of my top tips, is always to look in art gallery shops and museum shops, because they always have really lovely stationery. And then from the Orchid Festival, which I think you could see from the film was just beautiful. I mean, Burton Agnes Hall is an incredible house. The rooms were just stunning. And I hadn't got a chance to go inside because when we went for the Snowdrop Festival, the house wasn't open. And it was just only open this past weekend for the Orchid Festival, but it will, I think, be opening generally to the public later in spring, and it's so worth going. But I bought this little orchid, miniature orchid, to take home. Look how sweet it is. It has a very, very faintly vanilla scent. Um, and I put it in an old pot that I had and they gave me a little bit of moss at the festival, which was really nice. But I just think that's utterly adorable and a very nice memento of a lovely day too. And then of course I went to Minstergate Bookshop right by York Minster, which I love to go to because um, they've got a great selection of secondhand books and I thought I'd show you what I got. So they have secondhand books and they also have new books but at highly discounted prices. So this was one of the new discounted books I picked up, Stories of Motherhood. It's in the Everyman Pocket Classics series and with Mother's Day coming up in the UK I know that this will be lovely. I'm already sort of planning a photo for that day to go on Instagram and when I saw this I thought one I want to read it and two this will be perfect for my photo. <laughs> So I was really, really thrilled to pick this up very cheaply as well. So I was delighted by that. There was a whole stack of them there, by the way, too. So if you are in York, then you can go and pick one up yourself. Um, and then I found this beautiful edition of Dawn Wind by Rosemary Sutcliffe in the bookshop too. They've got a children's um, section on the sort of ground floor level when you walk in. And this one was there and I was so thrilled to see it. As you know, I read The Armourer's House recently and that sort of reminded me of what a great writer Rosemary Sutcliffe is. I read some of her books as a child, but she's not an author that I've gone back to much as an adult, but I loved The Armourer's House so much that now I'm really wanting to 
collect her children's books again and I was really pleased to find this one so that was wonderful. I love, by the way, um, her memoir too, published by Slightly Fox, it's The Blue Remembered Hills. That's a really good memoir um, and I really love it. She had quite an extraordinary life. Um, but anyway, yeah, I was really pleased to find that. And then um, they have some quite nice folio society editions at the Yorkminster bookshop, some, obviously some secondhand ones. And I picked up this rather gorgeous one of The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie by Muriel Spark. And it's illustrated by Beryl Cook. I think it's a fabulous edition. I'm so, so thrilled <laughs> with it. And I love York, uh, the Minster, well, I think it's called the Minster Gate Bookshop because they just have very reasonably priced books and that's always a treat <laughs> when you can find some real bargains. So this was a real bargain and I was really thrilled with that. So that's all that I got from my day in York. But I also thought I'd just share a few more secondhand books that I've got lately as a little mini vintage haul for you. So this was a more special vintage book that I got recently. It's A Candle for St. Jude by Ruma Godden and extra special because it is signed by her, which was just wonderful. I'm so thrilled to have a book signed by Ruma Godden. And I've been really wanting to read this one. I mean, already you probably know I'm a big Ruma Godden fan. I chose one of her books, China Court, for my comfort book club. And I like a lot of her children's books as well. And one of the children's books um, I remember reading and loving by her when I was little was Listen to the Nightingale, which is about a young girl who's very gifted at ballet, but she's very, very lonely. Um, she's being brought up by an aunt who is kind to her, but not a very demonstrative, demonstrative or very loving person. And this poor little girl is really very lonely and a bit deprived of love. And one day she spots a puppy, a little sort of King Charles Cavalier Spaniel puppy. And she ends up bringing this puppy home and she loves him with all her heart but she gets accepted into the Royal Ballet School and has to leave him. And making the decision on how to handle that, whether she should pursue ballet, or whether she can really sort of give up her puppy is really quite heartbreaking. And I just, I remember this book from my childhood. But what I've always wanted to read and have now just got is this adult book which connects to the children's book Listen to a Nightingale. So um, the young girl in the children's book goes to this ballet school in Hampstead that has this beautiful wisteria over its own sort of personal theatre and she has this rather eccentric but lovely ballet mistress. Well this book is really about the ballet mistress it's previous to Listen to a Nightingale and it's a an adult book as well. But it is also all about the, the ballet world. And I love ballet, so I've long been wanting to read this Room of Golden book and I was so, so thrilled to get a special edition of it signed by her. So I can't wait to read it and I'll be reporting back on it very soon. And then I got this edition of The Feast by Margaret Kennedy. It's the original edition. You know how much I loved The Feast when I read it last year and Faber released a lovely new paperback edition of the book. But when I come across a book I really love, I often want to also get the vintage copy of it um, if it's a backlisted book like The Feast is. So I was just so thrilled to find this really reasonably priced and I just had to pick it up. And I love the dust wrapper with those, with the ominous cliffs that are going to come tumbling down. <laughs> um, I think that's just really well done. So I was thrilled to get that. And then a puffin book that I've been wanting for ages, I managed to get just the other day and that's Friday's Child by John Verney. And I've heard about this book 
a lot. It's been one that's been on my wants list for a long time. And I'm so thrilled to have got it. It says, Friday's a boy with a talent for digging tunnels. February is his sister with a passion for horses. Their father, Augustus Callender, is a newspaper correspondent with a weakness for political intrigue. Between them, they manage to get involved in a world crisis. You get double value in this book because as well as being a first-class detective thriller, it is a gay and happy story about a particularly nice kind of family. There is also a great deal of incidental information about the way newspapers are run, the way cartoonists work, and the way some millionaires make their money. <laughs> and to make everything doubly authentic, the author has illustrated it himself. Well, I think that that just sounds like so much fun. <laughs> I can't wait to read this, and it's always lovely to add a new puffin to my <laughs> rather extensive collection of them. <laughs> so this is one I've been wanting for a while, and I'm really glad to have got it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been fun to do a bit of a newsy one and just share lots of different things that I've been loving lately. Do let me know what things have been making you happy lately, what you've been enjoying. I'd love to know. But yes, thanks so much for watching. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen over here. But I'll see you again next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.